So now, in this video, we have a circuit I put together. Let's say you have a bright LED here, and you want it to turn on when you press the uh, button there. Maybe this is a debounce circuit. Maybe you are worried that, uh, you know, when your finger slips, it might turn off, and um, you want the LED to stay on. Um, but, of course, we have a period of time there. You have to take that into consideration. Now, if you hold the button down over the longer period of time, because of the way that the 555 timer is, Maintaining the button also keeps the output high. As soon as uh, you let go of the button after that time has passed, the output will go low. So that time is just however long it took this LED to go off when you weren't holding the button uh, right there. Of course, the timing is adjusted with a capacitor and a resistor when you're using a 555 in monostable mode. So monostable mode means output's gonna stay low. In this case, it keeps the transistor off and the LED off until, in this case, you press a button, give a low input to a pin two. Then the capacitor is gonna charge, same time the output goes high, as good as it can get. It doesn't get the complete five volts, um, but uh, you know maybe four volts in this case, uh, right there. Uh, but it's gonna push current through the transistor, turning the transistor on, and getting our LED, I, I call it a module, to light up. So it's a five volt module. You can just put five volts across it. I think we're falling short uh, a bit for one reason or another. Um, but in any case, it's plenty bright still. Um, but uh, you get five volts across it, you get about 200 milliamps of current flowing through it. That's one watt right there. It has a resistor built onto it and uh, there's a metal backing. The resistor and the LED are attached. I had to solder wires to it. But in any case, the uh, 555 timer by itself is uh, not very good for lighting one of these LED modules, in my opinion, uh, because the data sheet says the maximum current is 200 milliamps of current, and that's what that expects, and I try to stay below the uh, maximum when it comes to the output of stuff. You know, I try to stay like halfway or less. So maybe this is perfectly fine to uh, switch directly, but I prefer uh, putting a transistor there. So I could do a lot more testing to see. But in any case, it's not so hard to get a transistor and switch it with a 555 timer. Also, the transistor is going to get more voltage across here uh, because uh, we have it when the output's high for the 55 when the module turns on. Um, but we could also have the module turn on when the output is low by syncing it, you know, ignoring this stuff, uh, syncing it uh, that way with a jumper. Um, but in any case, we're going to come back to the circuit that uh, I designed here. So 1.5 kilo ohms uh, to limit the current. I'm not sure exactly what the uh, current is. Again, we're probably working with like 4 volts uh, across here. This is going to drop about 0.6 volts, the base 2 emitter right there. And uh, you take whatever voltage you have and divide it by 1.5 kilo ohms, which is 1,500 ohms. Now I did swap uh, the 1.5K with a... 1000 ohm resistor and I still got basically the same amount of uh, total current that we got there In fact, I got less earlier um, Maybe I made like a little bit uh, better connection somewhere um, When uh, I reconnected this uh, but in any case there you can see we're following a bit shy of uh, 200 milliamps of current even though we're lighting the LED and charging the capacitor at the same time and having to put a little current uh, through the transistor to get it to conduct but uh, yeah that's uh, the basics of it. And all this stuff I covered, I've even covered this circuit in an earlier video, but all these other topics I've covered in uh, many other ones. So um, the switch there, you can see we're uh, to ground. These two are always connected. I could connect something right there and it would already always be connected to ground, um, but it's separated uh, top to bottom. It uh, lines up with these holes uh, right there. If you try to turn it part way, um, it will not uh, line up with the holes. So. They space the jumpers to fit in these holes pretty well. That's separated top to bottom. And uh, we go up to pin two, the trigger pin. We also have a pull up resistor. That keeps the voltage at five volts until we press the button. Uh, because if we're just kind of floating, um, nothing's uh, connecting to any specific uh, voltage, stray voltages can pick up at the pin and maybe uh, falsely trigger it. Um, so that's what the pull up resistor does. Just maintains five volts until we press the button. Of course, a little bit of current's gonna flow uh, through the switch when you press the button, uh, but uh, pin two will definitely see ground right there. It'll be a direct uh, connection. And uh, so there's our output going up there. First, we'll come to the timing. So we have the, uh, what's that, 47,000 ohm resistor right there. You can use a lower value resistor to go faster, 
or for how long the output's high, or a higher value resistor to make the output stay high longer. Of course, with these, I don't know uh, when they start struggling to be able to stay uh, high for longer periods of time. Um, but, uh, you know, like up to 10 seconds or so, you should be able to stay pretty accurate. I believe we had like two or three seconds here. But in case, 47K, and that charges the uh, capacitor when we uh, press the button right there. Now the capacitor is charging from zero volts up to two thirds of the supply voltage. Uh, when pin six right there sees that we got to two thirds supply voltage, pin seven there, which was doing nothing, it was off basically, now it connects to ground. So the capacitor instantly discharges, so you don't want to use a capacitor probably that's like larger than this value, because you kind of got a short, it uh, basically instantly discharges, which, uh, which is a little bit high current, but probably okay. Whatever current uh, gets through this resistor again, it's going to go right down to ground while the output is low, which we are doing now. So we are kind of losing, or we are losing current there, uh, going through there. And um, so, you know, you don't really want to go too low in value with this and too high of a value capacitor. It's better to keep the capacitor relatively low in value, the resistor relatively high in value. But in case you balance uh, which one's higher and which one's lower, depending on the timing you want to set, make them both lower it'll go quicker make them both higher it will go faster um the output being high i mean right there uh you find a balance um so in any case stuff i talked about in a lot of videos i'll try not to ramble on about that anymore of course you have to power the integrated circuit positive to pin eight negative uh to uh, pin one right there uh this is pin four that's the reset pin it's waiting for a ground connection you know pretty close to ground very close to zero uh maybe 0.5 um i think i did I found uh, testing 0.5 volts will also be a low input. But in any case, we got 5 volts there because I have the power supply set to 5 volts. So it's not going to do anything. Again, it's waiting for a pretty good connection to ground. And uh, we don't have that. We're to the positive supply. Pin 8 to positive supply and pin 1 down there. The voltage across these two pins is what sets the one third and the two third uh, voltage points. Um, this is waiting for one third or less, but uh, we go either from 5 or up to five or down to zero so it jumps right well below uh one third uh, we don't really have to worry about where the the voltage is there being one third it goes directly to ground which is below one third but uh for charging over here the capacitor this has to get up to two thirds supply voltage so there's a voltage divider built into there um that uh looks at one third two thirds if there's also pin five you don't adjust uh, that voltage. So pin five there. A lot of times you put a little capacitor there to uh, stabilize it, but uh, most of my circuits work just fine without that capacitor there. Um, technically, you should also put a capacitor across the supply uh, near the uh, transistor there where the two supplies come together to help stabilize the supply voltage there as well. But again, most of my circuits work without that, so I don't show it. I um, try not to put extra stuff on there that you can't tell what it's uh, doing as much as uh, possible. But again, a little capacitor from five to ground helps things a bit and a uh, capacitor across the supply voltage which looks uh, kind of hard to draw on the schematic without uh, making things confusing is also a good thing to have. You know, relatively high, maybe 100 microfarad. But uh, everything should work the vast majority of the time even without those capacitors. That's why I don't include them. Um, yeah, I... Uh, should have said this sooner, but uh, I'm using a 2N2222 22 here because, again, um, like I said, this uh, 555 timer, the maximum is 200 milliamps of current, either sourcing it or sinking it, um, however you're looking at it. Uh, it doesn't sink in this case uh, because the transistor, no current's going to go back uh, that way. Uh, but we do make a connection to ground that helps to get the uh, transistor here solidly off. I think I said capacitor before. Of course, this is a transistor. NPN, bipolar junction transistor. 2N2222 can switch up to about 600 milliamps of current. So again, that's the absolute max. I avoid absolute max. I try to stay like 300 um, milliamps or less when it comes to a switching. Wattage is more complex. That's the voltage built up across it plus the current flowing through it. Here we're trying to turn it on completely as possible so we don't really worry about the voltage. Um, doesn't really come into play. Uh, it's the current that's going through and especially when it's only about 200 milliamps of current flowing through that should be plenty fine for the transistor when you know you're trying to turn it on fully. Ultimately it'll be this load that uh, sets the uh, current. 
So hopefully we got the transistor conducting good enough where we got pretty close to five volts. And um, there's also like resistances in the wires and stuff may lower it a little bit. Um, but in any case, we're around 200 milliamps of current as we saw there. I'll turn this on. And uh, so it's a bit shy and the LED module is not the only current going through. There you can see it changed and obviously it's changing because like I bumped components or something and uh, made a little bit of resistance or something. Um, little more or a little less resistance than I had before. This is, I believe, a 5.6 ohm resistor right there. So when it comes to this module, um, all these other connections also have resistance. And the transistor even has like a little bit of uh, resistance. It's not referred to as resistance, but how well it conducts uh, goes down. So it's going to take away a little bit of the voltage um, from the uh, module, as is other resistances along the way. So if you soldered all of this together, then you would be have a little bit uh, more current, almost definitely, right there. But in uh, any case, rambled on long enough. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen, and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.